Today on the channel, the latest and greatest from Mattel, Masters of the WWE Universe. Welcome everyone, Kyle here and welcome back to the channel. Today on the channel, WWE Masters of the Universe Series 4, Walmart exclusive at this point and I think will continue to be. I love these figures, loved them from the get-go. I know a lot of people were upset. They felt like they have replaced the retro figures. And I think we all have to take a step back and be honest with ourselves. This line has been much more successful than the retro line figures. This has a, really been a crossover event and a crossover figure line. You have your traditional WWE fans buying these. You have He-Man fans buying these. I am a part of a lot of different groups out there in the internet. And the He-Man community goes wild for these figures as well. So you're crossing over multiple lines. Uh, they're a cheaper product, about $15 compared to your $20, $25 for some of your more pricey figures in the aisle. So these are really hitting their stride, I think, right now. Uh, already up to Series 4, like I said. Um, and this, Series 4, I do believe is probably the strongest set yet. Uh, it's been an interesting set as far as distribution-wise. As uh, In the United States, we first saw people getting these back in September down in Kentucky and maybe it was the Carolinas. But it took all the way up to Thanksgiving weekend for Midwest area to really hit with these lines and start getting them. Uh, they are by no means plentiful right now. They are hitting the stores as we speak. Luckily, the day before Thanksgiving, I found a couple of cases of these at a couple of stores and got what I needed and I'm all done. So uh, He-Man anxiety is over for uh, now until the next set. But these are a very, very strong line, like I said. And this could be the best set of the, of the bunch. It's actually more of a villain wave. As you got three bad guys and Mr. T being the lone good guy in the set. Uh, just a very, very strong wave and some really cool concepts. So really excited to unbox these. As you guys know, I have to have a min on card set as well, unpunched. So I have those as well. So it's all coming up He-Man as of late. I'm still looking for the traditional He-Man line, Scare Glow. Uh, and I will have a review on the channel of those when I do get those in. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But today, we're talking the Masters of the WWE Universe. And we're going to start with Jake the Snake Roberts. One of the all-time greats. One of the legends. Hall of Famer. You call it what you want. Very excited for him to be in this line. And it's just a natural fit that he is a takeoff of King Hiss. Uh, from the traditional He-Man line. Nobody else. I mean, when we, we were writing on paper... Who will these WWE characters represent? Who will be their He-Man tie-in? This was the easiest one to probably write. Uh, very simple to do. And uh, they did it well by the looks of things. So let's open it up. Let's see what it is. But first, we got to look at the packaging here. So you get your traditional packaging with these Masters of the WWE Universe. A little bit of a flimsy card. Uh, if you're looking for Minon card, you got to really look a little hard. as These corners can very easily be bent. Uh, you guys know from uh, me on the channel, I prefer my uh, mint on card ones to have the punch uh, not be punched. Uh, this one is obviously punched. It was up on the rack, but I put them in protective cases and I like them unpunched. So that's part of my rules, which gives an added challenge to finding these figures unpunched because you got to find them before the uh, employee puts them up on the pegs. Um, so there you go. You got Jake on there. He's kind of got that macho man we saw from a couple series ago, uh, vest, chest plate type thing going on. I uh, got the cool traditional Jake colors. I say traditional as it does kind of remind me of the Hasbro a little bit back in the day. Uh, the same card we've seen with uh, the Masters of the WWE Universe for a while. Got the little sticker down here. What's it say? Highly articulated for power posing. And power posing is, is very interesting. It's a lot different than your traditional posing. Um, I have no idea what it is, but it's got to be. It's on there on the sticker. It's for power posing. Not just your traditional posing, but power posing. Just remember that when you're playing with these. Uh, let's check out the back, and the back is awesome. I absolutely love that artwork up top there. Look at Jake, and who is this snake biting but the Macho Man. Throws back to young 10, 11-year-old Kyle watching WWE Superstars on a Saturday morning and seeing that uh, Cobra biting Macho Man. One of the greatest things ever as a kid. I mean, I was just blown away by that. It was so amazing. Uh, you know, it was the talk of the schoolyard when that was going on. Uh, I just wish something would excite me like that did uh, back in the day. Uh, very, very cool and uh, something I'll never forget in my whole life of wrestling. Probably a top five wrestling moment for me, actually. Uh, it was that cool and I loved that feud. And, you know, it brought Macho Man back to the ring after he was successfully de defeated by the all-time great, the Ultimate Warrior, the best of the best. There was no question about it. Warrior was going to retire the Macho Man. 
But even us warriors agreed it was time for Randy to get back in the ring and avenge this snake bite from Jake the Snake. But there it is. You also got the list of the characters in the wave and a little instruction type thing there for uh, what to do with Jake. Absolutely love that. Every toy should be like this on the back. You got a cool graphic. You got the four people in the line. You got what it does. That is what you do in toys, people. And then you got a little, a little uh, blurb here. I'm going to read the blurb. The superstars of WWE Eternia will learn that whether you get in, entranced by his hypnotic words or frozen by his paralyzing stare, you don't mess with the snake without getting bit. Uh, couldn't have said it better myself. Just amazing. Absolutely love this. Love everything about this. Um, I've been a fan of these since the get-go. I'll pull a spade a spade or whatever you want to call it. I would prefer the retros. I mean, that's 100% wrestling. I grew up with that style of figure. But man, I grew up on He-Man too, so I do love this as well. I wish both lines could have prospered together. But let's open this Jake. I'm excited. See what's going on in here. Get that comic out first. Pump it out. There it is. See you later, Jake. All right. I love it. No paint problems, no smudges. Every once in a while on these masters, you got to look. Uh, they'll get a little brown spot, very similar to Hasbro Ultimate Warrior Series 2. Uh, brown spot on the nose. Macho Man was probably the worst of that. I don't know how many machos I passed up because of that brown spot on the nose. There's Jake in his plastic prison. Love those bright colors. Very, very cool. Very cool. He is uh, secured in there, so got that taken care of. Got a snake in here. Let's see what the snake's all about. Let's look at this first. If I can get him out. They got him like all wrapped up here. Come on. There it is. Now I think this is a snake we've seen before. See you later. I'm pretty sure this is one of the, the snakes that we've had with the Jake Roberts Mattels over the years. It makes total sense. But it has a new bright neon paint. Very cool. Absolutely love it. I could see somebody using this with their Mattel. Maybe they're missing a snake and this would be cheaper to get. Or just freshen things up. Change things up a bit. But I absolutely love that snake. I love the neon bright colors. Get Jake out. Jeez, he's really buckled in here. You know, you, he's a dangerous snake, man. He's got to be in for safety. All right, see you later. How about that comic here? Look at that. Just awesome. He's got um, Jake uh, in the back. You got him going crazy. There's Macho down in the flames. Ghost Rider must be coming for him. Marvel Select Ghost Rider. On the back, you got all four you can collect. There's the whole line. And I believe all these comics are the same, but we'll see. Maybe not. No, they look, they're look. they gonna be different, I think, maybe. But there's the insides. Not gonna read the comic to you. But you can pause it, maybe you can read it from here, I don't know. But I do like the addition of the comic. It's just a nice little touch. Just a great touch to back to how it used to be with He-Man in the old days and stuff. Just a slam dunk line. You know, I'd be curious to see if you guys are buying all these. I think it's early enough. I'm not sure if the aftermarket value is super crazy on Series 1 yet, but get all these. You owe it to yourself. Get every single one. Love, love, love this figure. And they're really nice, too. If you want them to be He-Man looking, you can leave this on. Or you can take his chest plate off, and it could be just regular old Jake the Snake Roberts. And you can have these as wrestling figures. So a lot of different things you can do with these. You've got the two thumbs up hand. But there he is, Jake. I, I love it. Slam dunk. One of the best in the Masters line, for sure. I mean, definitely Jake the Snake Roberts. All-time legend. Uh, as you guys know, I do put these on the ringside collectible stands. Fit like a glove. Look at that. Just look at that. Just amazing. So there you go. There's Jake Snake Roberts. Let's look at the next one. All right. Next up in the Masters of WWE line, we have Seth Rollins. It's a traditional thing they kind of do. They put some legends in there like Jake the Snake and Mr. T, but then you're going to have some current day guys like The Fiend and Seth Rollins. I'm actually a little bit surprised it's taken this long to get a Seth Rollins in this line, but here he is either way. So it looks like he is a villain in this line. You never know. Seth Rollins kind of goes back and forth, back and forth, and you don't know how far out these are made, but just by the packaging here on the back, I do presume he is a villain in this uh, He-Man universe at this time at least. There's the package. He's got kind of that old school for you He-Man guys, Zodiac chest plate, so I guess that's who he's kind of supposed to represent. As you can see, this one is unpunched, but I do have a better one, a better uh, non-bent corner one um, unpunched. So that's why I'm opening this. Highly articulated for power posing as well. It seems like that's a running theme. 
So we're ready. And then it says underneath his, underneath his name's Slayer of Kings and Beasts, Seth Rollins. On the back, there's nobody more enduring than the Architect of Alliances. He'll take on any obstacle to win, even if he has to burn it down. I'll be. Now, just I, I can't believe how far young Seth Rollins has come. Young Iowan, just like myself. I remember seeing him many a times at local indie shows and even being backstage at some indie shows and seeing him. And I remember one time him sitting in the back corner reading Harry Potter. And that was the first time I ever met Seth Rollins, a very young Seth Rollins. And I remember telling my buddy that was a wrestler, I said, hey, who's the nerd in the corner reading Harry Potter? And that was Seth Rollins. That, that was the nerd in the corner. So there you go. He went on to bigger things than his Harry Potter. Uh, here's the back. Same thing. Describes what he does down there. You got the four, and then you got the cool artwork with Triple H in the background there. I do love that he comes with a flame sword, so I can't wait to see what that's all about. Let's open it up, and we'll find out for sure what it's about. Pull out that. There you go. See you later. Oh, got him taped in. Ow. There it is. Get him out. Here he is in his plastic prison. Look at that. Looking like Zodiac. Very similar. But these are all uh, locked in. I don't hate it. Just a little extra work. See you later. See you later. All right. Get this sword out. See what the, all the fuss is about with this sword. It looks pretty cool. It's like flame sword of some kind. If I can get it out, they, they really wrap these up. See you later. Huh, interesting. I cannot recall a He-Man accessory like this back in the day with flames on it. I might be wrong. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is uh, Seth Rollins' deal. It's his gig. Very cool. I like these kind of accessories like this. Uh, let's see if the Inside Comic is different. Oh, the Inside Comic is different. I believe Series 1, every single comic was the exact same. Um, but here's Series 4, Seth Rollins. There you go. So cool. I'll have, I'll have to read those later. Some light reading before bed tonight. Uh, but here's Seth Rollins. You know, these figures are extremely cheap to produce as they are really all the same body. Just different heads. Just a little bit different paint. But I do like that sword. I think that is pretty solid. So all in all, not a bad figure with this Seth Rollins. I will say, I can't remember if I said it earlier, I guarantee you Seth Rollins will be the peg warmer of this set. Uh, early early eyes on me in the stores is showing Mr. T is the one everybody is wanting. Uh, then I got to think Jake and the Fiend are going to be right behind. And then you got Seth, a distant fourth. He's just not a, not as many bells and whistles, whistles with this Seth Rollins as compared to the other ones in the set. But still, a good figure and maybe a, a better one in different lines. But happy to get Seth Rollins finally. An Iowa boy does good. There it is, Seth Rollins. Let's take a look at the Fiend. Alright, next up in Series 4, we have The Fiend. And The Fiend was made for this uh, universe. We all knew it was just a matter of time before we got a figure. And here it is, and it looks very solid from uh, the looks of things. We'll see what it looks like when we open it up. But there he is in package. The Fiend Bray Wyatt, looking only like he can look, as one would say. Packed with power posing, of course, as you guys know. Uh, it also says, Evil Lord of Fireflies. So there you go, very cool name there as well. So, let's see the back. There it is. Look at that cool artwork. They really knocked it out of the park with that He-Man inspired artwork at the top. Then you got the uh, actions that he does. Then you got the lineup below. A little different setup than uh, the previous one. So that's kind of cool on the packaging there. Let's see what it says back here. Yowie Wowie, the insane intergalactic host from another dimension, can't wait to play with the superstars of WWE Eternia. All they need to do is let him in. Very cool. Oh, his mouth does move. You can make his mouth move, and he can replace his hands with weapons. So very cool that he's got a like a trap jaw type mouth, it sounds like. So let's open it up. Let's see what's going on here. Let's go. Here's the comic. Got to have that, of course. And we'll see you later. And got to open him up. All these guys are uh, rubber banded in, which is interesting. They haven't been the other last few sets. Alright, got him on the feet here. Oh, here it is. Got him out. Maybe. Oh, I forgot to do the old plastic prison shot, didn't I? We'll just pretend I didn't do that. There he is in the old plastic prison. 
looking cool. I, I definitely like this one. It'll be interesting how well this sells. I think it will do very well. Uh, Fiend Mania, but we're starting to see a Fiend back up, backlog a little bit. You know those Walmart Elite shippers are out, Elite 77 that have uh, a lot of Fiends on them. And then the top picks I see are starting to hit the stores pretty hard. And I've actually seen the same top picks Fiend for about two weeks at my local Target. So I don't know if Fiend Mania is slowing down or everybody got one or there's not enough difference. See you later. Uh, maybe that's the case. I don't know. And here's the old comic book for the Fiend. There you go on the inside. Very cool. I like it. See you later. Boo! All right. So he does have a vest. I guess I didn't even notice the vest looking through him. Um, but he does have a vest, so that's kind of a, an accessory, if you will. I don't know if his mouth... Yeah, his mouth does move. It's a little harder to move than the traditional trap jaw mouth, if you're familiar with trap jaw. It looks a little goofy all the way open. But a cool feature nonetheless. Something we have not had in the past. Uh, as you guys know, these can be the parts on these can be mixed and matched. And with the He-Man. So you can pull arms, heads, legs, torsos. They're, they're like a, a Lego. I mean, you just pop the arm off. Just as easy as that. Pop them back in if you want. You can pop the hands off, very similar to a lot of different figures. Pop the hand off, pop the hand off. I guess he must be like Trap Jaw, is my guess. He's got the moving mouth, he's got kind of the weapons, his arms. Uh, very cool. I can see the paint going south on this one with the face paint. He's got one little black spot, but not terrible. But yeah, you can move uh, the hands around, you can mix and match all these. As a little kid, I think a lot of little kids would like to create their own people and stuff like that. Funny enough, when I was a little kid, I would be totally against that. I would not be mixing and matching. I wouldn't be plugging and playing. I wouldn't be doing any of that. I'm a traditionalist with my figures. There's no messing around, that is for sure. On my side as a figure, as a little boy, I had no crazy imagination for that. You know, I had, I had friends out there with G.I. Joes that would make the legs and they would change and make new characters out of them. I thought it was the craziest thing. It was so sacrilegious. Um, it was like a, a walking into the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house at some of my friends' house. I'd go in there and say, what are you doing? You're mixing things around. That's Flint and barbecue. They're not supposed to be merged together. What the heck? I mean, it really was a horror show, and I can't stand it. can't stand it to this day. Um, so there you go. But that is The Fiend. Extremely solid. Uh, this whole line's been solid so far. We're going to finish it up with Mr. T, who I said is probably the most popular in this line, or at least what early retail results I'm seeing are saying. So let's do it. Let's open up Mr. T. All right, guys, time for Mr. T. And if you guys know and follow Mattel, we're getting Mr. T overload. We had the San Diego Comic Con exclusive Mattel Elite uh, Mr. T. And now we just recently, as of speaking right now, a two pack with Rowdy Roddy Piper, WrestleMania 2 Mr. T two pack. And then, of course, this Masters of the Universe Mr. T. So they are going to the well as many times as they can. I've said it before on the channel. I do think they probably signed Mr. T to like a year-long agreement, and they're trying to knock out every single Mr. T they can. Uh, just waiting for that you know, WCW Mr. T and maybe the Hall of Fame speech Mr. T. We can round out our collections and be all teed off, if you will. Uh, but yeah, that is why Mr. T is in here. Does he fit in this line? I don't know. It's kind of weird. He's not really a WWE superstar. So it's really weird, but I guess it works. And with that contract, I'm sure it overlaps to a lot of different things. Um, so it does work. And if uh, you like your 80s wrestling and 80s pop culture, there was nobody bigger than Mr. T. I mean, Mr. T was the man. Uh, you know, So there you go. The A-team, you name it. Uh, can we get a Murdoch in this line? I would be very happy. Or a Hannibal. Or a Face. I don't care. Give me a whole wave of A-team. Uh, Amon uh, Merrigan out there, I know he would love an A-team set. And I would be right there with him. So... Here you go. There's Mr. T. Let's take a look at the packaging. There it is, Mr. T. Looking like a young Fisto. If you guys remember your He-Man Fisto, that's who he's kind of representing there. What's it say? He is the heroic pityer of fools. That makes perfect sense. Obviously is uh, has power posing available. I like they gave him knee pads, I'm noticing on here, so that is pretty cool. Looks like Mr. T. There's no denying this Mr. T. This reminds me of that Mr. T. Oh, he's about this tall... Probably came out in the early 80s. Uh, I had it as a kid. I absolutely loved that Mr. T. Um, that's what the head. It looks just like that head almost. Very similar. There is the back. I cannot wait to read his description. As you know, it's going to be just funny. It's It's got to be, right? Includes collector booklet. Enough with the jibber jabber. 
Master of the Gold Weapons Forge, Mr. T pities all the fools who challenges him to head-to-head -to -head Mohawk combat. I love it. I love everything about it. Mohawk combat, jibber-jabber, pity of the fools. I mean, hits all of it. Hits all the feels for me. That's what I want. Arm Mr. T with golden gauntlets. Twist into powerful battle positions. Oh, this Mr. T, he's going to rule my WWE Universe fig fed with an iron fist. No pun intended. So let's open him up. Let's open up this Mr. T. What a world 2020 is. We're getting new Mr. T figures. See you later. Just amazing. There he is. Very, very cool. Get this out. Of course, he's locked in. Looks like he's in a massive blood feud with Triple H by the looks of this comic. So we'll show that here in a second. Get him out. See you later. Rubber Band City. All right. Oh, yeah, here's the comic. Let's look at this first here. Look at that. That If that doesn't say blood feud, I don't know what does. They're, they're out to kill each other. Out to kill each other. I pity the fool who messes with the tea. Makes me hungry for Mr. T cereal. What was up with that cartoon, Mr. T? I used to watch that when I was a kid. He, he was like with a bunch of gymnasts and stuff. That was really weird. Uh, was he like traveling in a van and pitying fools all over the place and going to gymnastic meets? I don't know. I just remember watching that. Maybe it was on USA when I was a kid or NBC. I don't remember. The height of Mr. T mania. See you later. All right. Look at these hands. I'm not a big fan of this gloved hand. It almost looks like uh, the Infinity Gauntlet. I mean, maybe Mr. T will ch challenge Thanos next. Very well could happen. You never know. Never know where these crossovers might lead. You know, once you get WWE Eternia mastered, maybe you move on to uh, the Marvel Universe. Very well could happen with Mr. T. He's a crazy guy. But yeah, that's Mr. T. 2AT, no pun intended. Love the colors. As usual, you can take that vest off, and he could be your wrestling Mr. T. He could be your WrestleMania 1 Mr. T. Uh, just pull off very easily. I'm not going to do it, but let's put these hands on. That's what I'm excited to see. I'm excited for Mr. T to go to the next level. I think you leave the hands on, actually. Let's see. Should have read the instructions. Get Mr. T's hand back on there. Oh, yeah, you got to leave the hands on to put these on. Very cool. But, yeah, Mr. T, I don't know. He's got uh, spots on the back of the back of his vest there. You can put, like, uh, weapons and stuff. So it tells you we're getting reuse out of this vest uh, in the future because uh, he does not have any weapons that go in there. But very cool. For you 80s people, you wrestle, hardcore wrestling people of the 80s, uh, you can't sleep on this Mr. T. Even if you just want a Mr. T in your kind of pop culture collection, this would be a great one to grab. Like I said, you could take this vest off and everything, and he's just regular Mr. T. I would have loved to have seen some gold chains. You can't have Mr. T without gold chains, so that is a missing piece to me. I get they put a gold vest on him, kind of, hey, there's a representation of his gold chains. But I'd really like to see those regular gold chains on here. Maybe holding a box of cereal with the A-Team cereal or the Mr. T cereal. And why not? While you're at it, make that whole gymnast squad so we can have them too. Um, so there you go. That's Mr. T. Now let's line them all up and uh, finish the video off and, and go from best to worst. All right, guys, let's finish up this video. And honestly, I think this was the strongest WWE Masters of the Universe set so far. Uh, really hitting on all cylinders. Uh, really deep cuts with the Mr. T. Jake the Snake, awesome. The Fiend, an awesome current character. And then Seth Rollins to kind of round it out of a regular type figure, I guess you'd say. Uh, but very solid set. Uh, obviously, the Ultimate Warrior is my favorite in the set so far, but some strong contenders right here. And I was so enamored with this Jake and his snake and everything else, I forgot the coolest part of the Jake snake figure. So there's Jake, of course. His face is removable, just like old school King Hiss. You just pull that face right off and bam, there it is. Look at that. How cool is that? Uh, a two-in-one figure. It almost makes you say, hey, I need to get two of these. One to display with the face on, one with the face off. Uh, you can take this vest off. He's traditional Jake the Snake wrestler. Or you put you know, the face off and you could be a King Hiss type person. But man, that is cool. That is a cool and just another added dimension of coolness on this Jake the Snake. And by, you know, by having that, the cool snake, the vest, you know, being Jake, being a great character from the 80s I grew up with, he is the definite far and away number one in this set for me. Just really cool. Actually, King Hiss was one of my favorite He-Man figures growing up as well. So 
uh, really fits together perfectly uh, to bring it all full circle for me. But Jake, number one. Mr. T is a close, not, not a close number two, but these two are fairly close to each other. Uh, Mr. T is cool just because of the nostalgia factor of Mr. T. You know, we, we got to run down memory lane a little bit for me just in this video. I'm starting to think of his cereal. I'm thinking of the chains. I'm thinking about his wrestling career. And then I'm thinking about his gymnast squad. Uh, those gymnasts, never forget them. Um, but that Mr. T is very cool as well. I think a lot of people are getting that. Like I said, I went to three stores, found three sets of these. One of those stores, all the Mr. T's were gone. So I do think Mr. T is going to be the most popular in the set. But then the Fiend, you cannot sleep on this Fiend figure. Fiend Mania is kind of running wild in 2020. Uh, and I do feel this one will be a strong one. This is, it's very toyetic, as they say in the industry. Uh, a lot of uh, kids would want this one. You know, the crazy face, the interchangeable weapons, stuff like that. So I could see this one being a hot seller. And then, unfortunately, Seth Rollins, I do really think the sword is awesome on this one. But it's just not a lot of meat on the bone when you compare it to three gimmicky type guys. You know, Mr. T, just the quirky gimmick of him being in the line at all. But, you know, the other stuff too. This is more of a plain Jane figure. And Seth, you know, isn't a, pl a plain Jane wrestler, but his appearance is a lot plainer than these guys. Uh, so thinking of that level and what I want out of these, he is number four. But maybe some other sets he would have been higher. But this is a very, very strong set. So there you go. That's how I put him in order. You guys tell me in the comments how you put them in order, your thoughts, you picking this up, you passing on it, or you like me and need a mint on card set and a loose set, you guys let me know in the comments. And then while you're there leaving a comment, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So for Kyle in the Masters of the WWE Universe Series 4, Seth Rollins, The Fiend, Mr. T, Jake Roberts, I pity the fool.